Hey everyone, we're doing a video today kind of showcasing some of the products that we use or at least most of the products that we use outside of the RV, um, including the basics, sewer hoses, electrical connections, storage for all that stuff. Um, because we did hours and hours of research before we bought anything and I think we got a pretty good uh, success rate. We've replaced a few things, but um, but most of the stuff that we bought out of the gate we still use and and use over and over again so this is just really going to um, kind of summarize a lot of that research that we did show you guys the products that we chose and what we think about it as well as let you know which products we've replaced over the last year or so um, it is going to be a longer video so I'm going to put links to the different sections below so if you look in the description below if you're only interested in certain um, products or, or areas of the camper outside just click those links you don't have to watch the whole video obviously we'd appreciate you to to watch it all but um, time is valuable we understand anyway stick around and uh, check it out so let's start over here with the essentials right so everybody needs the sewer pipe Uh, which I've heard affectionately referred to as the Stinky Slinky, and that name is stuck. So I will be referring to it as the Stinky Slinky. Anyway, um, we bought this uh, Rhino uh, 20 foot, so there's two 10 foot sections, and we've used this right out of the gate. We bought it before um, we even took our first trip. The most campers come with uh, a sewer hose, a Stinky Slinky, but ours didn't even have an attachment on one end of it. So um, that kind of stinks. Anyway, luckily we, we read a bunch of reviews, tips and tricks, watched videos like this one. Um, and, and this one's been awesome. It's been great. And we added a uh, clear piece here at the front and then back here where it actually goes into the sewer, there's a clear piece there. And but the reason you want um, a clear view, uh, as disgusting as it is, you want to be able to see when your black tank is clean. And you get stuff stuck inside of that black tank and you want to flush it out. Well, you have to do a couple rounds of that and you want to see when it's clean. You also want to see when it's empty. You know, if you're just um, doing a dump and go, you still want to see when it's empty. You don't want to leave stuff in there. So. It's always nice to be able to see at one end or the other when there's stuff coming in and out. Now, in addition to that, we bought the um, the Stinky Slinky supports here. Uh, what these do is they, they keep the hose supported up and gradually go um, down. So it just keeps the flow working with gravity, keeps it off the ground and um, and, and this one is really long, flexible. You can see it's got a lot of different um, ways that you can, can move and flex it. So it's not just one straight line. You can curve it around things if you need to. Uh, so that's nice. Now we'll look at our electrical hookup. You can see we've got a surge protector right there. Plugged in, we have a 30 amp service on ours absolutely get a surge protector you want to protect all the electronics inside your RV and then we got the standard Camco I think it's a 25 foot hose or a 25 foot cable that just plugs straight in in addition to that we got uh, what they refer to as the dog bone so this allows you to move from 50 amp to 30 amp service so if you're at a site that only has 50 amp service, um, you can plug it in here and then you plug your 30 amp receiver here and you're good to go. Um, we haven't actually had to use this yet. Every site that we've been to has had 30 amp service, but if you have 50 amp service, we've seen a lot of sites that don't offer that. So you would get the other version of this, which is a 30 to 50 adapter. So anyway, I definitely recommend it. They're only about 15 bucks. Um, this is a Camco brand and Looks like it'll be good quality. Like I said, we haven't used it yet, but I'm glad we have it. And we also have this um, 15 to 30 adapter. I would absolutely recommend that as well. 
Sometimes this is just your standard house plug setup. And sometimes, um, especially like if you're boondocking or something, you're gonna need something like that or just plugging it into your house. You pull it to the house and you wanna charge your batteries. There you go. These we got from Camping World. They are little hose caddies. I bought two of them and they've worked out great. Um, they stack on top of each other. There's a little thing in the center to hold your, your extra stuff. Um, so in this case, I'm holding the 20 amp or the 15 amp adapter and the, um, and the dog bone there. So let's talk about the hose. That is a good segment. Um, we are now using a zero G hose. It's a 50 foot RV Marine hose. And I absolutely love this. This is the second water hose that we've had. We bought one from Camping World. It's a really, you know, it looked nice. It was, you know, supposed to be super tough and had all the good connections. And it, it worked well, but it was just a bear to wind up. Um, and I think that was a 25 foot hose. But it was just a bear to wind up and keep wound up. We had um, little ties that we had to use each time and, and fight it in and we had to fight it into this caddy and it was just awful but this zero g um i mean it just goes completely flat and like a string you can just wind it around like a string you can see how easily it's wound in there i did that um in like a minute last time and i had it all stretched out when we were boondocking um a couple nights ago so this thing's great um, i highly recommend just skip everything else and go straight for the zero G hose. It's been fantastic. The one caveat to that is make sure you have your water pressure regulator in front of your zero G hose. The only bad thing I've read about these is that if the water pressure gets too high, it can um, burst the hose or cause leaks in it rather. So that's one thing you wanna make sure you do. Um, now, speaking of pressure regulators, this is our third. And the first two were just the typical brass inlines. And they looked kind of, you know, if you ignore this part here. And basically, they were factory set to supposedly 30 PSI or 35. And the, the reason, they were only like seven or eight bucks. And I kept leaving them <laughs> at the different campsites. But the other problem with them was the water pressure just wasn't very good. We were not getting very good water pressure at the sink. It was very hard to wash dishes. So I did some research and newer regs can handle quite a bit of water pressure. They say up to 100 PSI, but um, most people that I've um, seen online say, you wanna keep it below 50. Um, so that's what we've got here. You can see well, the water pressure, the needle's moving because somebody's in there using the water. But uh, this has a, a dial, which is great. Um, so you can see exactly what your water pressure is. And then there's a, um, an adjuster up here. So you just move it to the left um, or right to make it higher or lower. We've got our set at just above 40 and that seems to be just okay with us. Um, you can turn it up a little bit more, but this is definitely, um, definitely worth the 30, I think it's $35 that we spent on it. So don't worry about the inline brass one. I would go ahead and get something like this for sure. Just save your money there. Next up, definitely get a Y adapter for your hose. These are great because you have an open connection here. So we use a, a separate hose for our black tank flush. And in a situation like this where we're here for a week, we may want to flush the tank out in, in between. So instead of unhooking our main water hose, we can just hook it onto here, turn it on, flush it out, unhook it, and we're fine. Um, I have left a couple of these uh, laying around. So I went ahead and bought one that's got the, the, the black tips here to help make it stand out. A lot of times we're, we're trying to rush out of here because Malcolm's not happy. Going up along the water, You've got your RV inline filter. It's just a Camco. I think everybody in the universe has these. You'll see them at every campground. They have been great. Um, if you look on Amazon, you can usually get them in two and three packs for a pretty good price. Um, the per 
filter cost is usually cheaper than buying it singular. And um, they last about six months depending on usage. We also have this little um, right angle adapter. This thing's been great for just making it real easy to connect to there. And then you drops down, you can hook everything else up. So this thing, I think it was a couple bucks on Amazon, um, but absolutely worthwhile. Would buy again every time. The length levelers, you can see that we're using them over here. This campground is just slightly unlevel. Um, so we only had to use one row of those and that's how they work. Um, they're okay. We like them enough. Katie has a problem with them staying in place when we go to wheel over them. A lot of people that we follow on YouTube have switched over to these um, Anderson style levelers, which look like a curved ramp and you drive up on them just enough um, to get the level that you want. So next year, I think we're going to switch over to those. But these link levelers, they've still been good as jack stands. So... Um, but they're kind of expensive, so I don't know. I would do your, do your research on those a little bit more and figure out what style works for you. Um, the Anderson style levelers are more expensive. These are a little more versatile, but probably not as easy to use. And you can see I've got my other set of links levers, levelers there used as jack stands. So this is an Anderson trailer jack block. Um, I think this cost about 25 bucks. And they sell them in multi-packs. Uh, we see fifth wheels have these a lot under their, their front stands. We could also use these as um, jack stands too if we wanted to, but they really work well for the, the tongue, tongue jack here on the travel trailer. Uh, I like it because it's solid easy to put in, easy to kick out, and I don't feel like it's going to sink. Like we used to have a wood block that we used, but it was pretty small and, and we worried that, you know, if the earth shifted, if, like especially if we were on gravel, that it would, you know, shift off. And that may be an unreasonable worry, but this thing's been very stable and sturdy and given us the extra height that we needed to, so we don't have to extend the the tongue jack as much as we've had in the past so um, if they were a little more portable because we don't have a ton of storage room um, I might buy four more for the stabilizer jacks but we'll see maybe next year that brings us over to these X chocks and they sit in between your your wheels and you can only use this if you have a, a multi-axle trailer it's not gonna work on a single axle so it builds pressure between the two tires to make sure they don't go anywhere and then also kind of acts as a stabilization. We have noticed that when we use these, the trailer's just a little bit more stable when we're parked, um, which is nice. They're easy on, easy off. It comes with a little tool, um, a little ratcheting tool to loosen and tighten them. So two things to note, you still want to use your chocks, your blocks with these because um, they can loosen. Um, the chocks themselves won't loosen, but if you've had a long trip um, in a hot weather, your tire pressure is going to increase quite a bit. You're going to put these on right when you get to the campsite, and then over the next day, your tire pressure may lower, so you want to come back out and check these and make sure they're still tight and secure. Um, we've heard stories of, of them loosening and falling off, so we always end up using our regular chocks too. So, just for extra security. And I'm gonna talk for a minute about this picnic table cover. Um, we bought this for about 15 bucks at uh, Camping World. They had a bunch of different designs. This is the one we picked. And the table cover has been okay. Um, I mean, it's good, nice quality, easy to clean, and it does give you a good surface. Um, but it's only fit on two of the picnic tables we've used on our last eight trips so that's not pretty good and it also came with um covers for the the seats on the picnic table and those have fit exactly zero of the eight picnic tables we've tried it on so 
some days I think that it would have been better to just get a, a big cloth, picnic tablecloth or something. The only redeeming quality about this uh, beyond that is that it does have the elastic down here. So it does fit snugly on the picnic table when it does fit. So I don't know. It packs up nice into a bag. If you find them on sale somewhere for like five bucks, I'd say it's probably worth it. But otherwise, I, this is probably one of the one of the things I'd skip for now. Solo stove. We did a review on this. We still love it. We're going to do a long term review at the end of the season. We use it every camping trip almost every night. So we don't ever use the fire pit that comes with the campground. We always just use our solo stove. Um, it's easier to start a fire in, well worth the money. It's portable enough that we don't mind it taking up the space it does take up. And, um, you know, a lot of the camping trips, especially the early ones, the fire pits were real low. They didn't have a good border. One of them was just a small rock border. Um, on a high windy day, you couldn't have a fire at all. But if we'd had this solo stove, we would have been able to have a fire that night. No problem. So that is something that we, we absolutely recommend, uh, especially if you're going to be out a lot. The only caveat to that is that out west, I guess there are some places where you can't burn at all. And if you want any kind of a campfire, it would have to be a propane one. So next is this little lifetime table. I think we got it from Amazon. Um, but it's, it's nice. Um, it's not super huge. I, I do wish it was a little bit bigger, but it works for us. We put our little grill on it. And it's got um, actually four positions that you can put the legs in. So the legs are adjustable. It folds up into a little square um, and stows away real easy. As you can see the lady on the picture doing. Um, but yeah, it, it's nice. It locks into place. It's very stable. The top is heat resistant. So if I have to set something hot on top of it, I'm not worried about it. Speaking of that, we have our little Weber Q, which I love. Um, it comes with a cover. We have the 1200 series, which is the smaller. There's also a bigger 2200 series or 2000 series. Um, the difference between the 2200 and the 2000 and the 1200 and the 1000 is that the 1000 series don't have these little fold out shelves, which I find even with the table are ultra useful. Um, the grill is amazing. It cooks very evenly. It always lights up fast. The grates are great. And um, it comes with, um, or it doesn't come with, but you can buy the griddle sections. So these actually, this is a section here and this is a section here. And you can put a griddle, you can buy two of them and put them on either side. We have one. So I use that in the morning. I'll cook bacon. Um, I'll start it over here, cook it over here. When the bacon's done, I'll make a few fried eggs over there. Um, you do hot cakes, you can do whatever. It's nice. And they just run on these little green um, one pound propane tanks, which you can pick up at Walmart or pretty much anywhere. Um, now you can buy a regulator and hook it into a bigger tank, or if your camper has a line built in near your outdoor kitchen, um, and you can hook it onto that too. So. I don't think the regulator is too much. But one of my favorite things is the cleanup on this. It's just got this really nice tray down here um, that slides out, you can see, and um, collects all the, the debris. I put aluminum foil. Weber actually sells a little pan that fits perfectly in there. But aluminum foil is a lot cheaper, and you can just form it around the outside, and it collects things just fine. So it holds temperature super well, cooks great. Um, when we're out camping, we use this for everything. So this is pretty much what 80% of our meals are cooked on when we're camping. And even when we're not, because it's so portable, I'll throw it in the back of the truck and I'll break it out at home. So anytime I'm grilling at home, I'm now using this instead of my big barrel smoker. So now we come to the rug. I think we got a six foot by 11 foot rug. Um, I'll double check myself on that. Um, but this thing's been more useful than I thought it was going to be. Um, we actually didn't use it the first couple trips out. Um, a lot of times, so one of the places had a very nice concrete pad that covered the whole area. That was fine. Um, it was most useful at Arrow Rock and Baker, um, where we had a lot of dirt in front of the camper, and it kept um, a lot of that dirt 
out from the front here. So we didn't track a bunch of it in, um, rocks especially. Here you can see it's very rocky in the front. And it's been really good at helping keep those um, off of your shoes and outside of the camper. So um, it folds up pretty nice. Um, it's still got the creases in it, you can see. So I just follow those, fold it up. Folds up pretty quick, stores well in the pass-through storage here. Um, so I would absolutely recommend that. That's one of the things that um, I would buy again um, right out of the gate. Um, even though we don't use it every single trip, when we do use it, it's been supremely useful. So let's talk about leveling here. I went ahead and ponied up for the Level Mate Pro, and that thing's been pretty great. Um, if you don't know what this is, it hooks up to your phone through Bluetooth and tells you while you're still hooked up whether you're level or not. So you don't have to get it. You have to get out to turn it on. But after that, so we pull up the app and you can see it's telling us that we are pretty much level here, which is great. Um, so I guess you can save different hitch positions. Um, you do have to go into settings and set your wheelbase and your length from your rear tire to your jack. So you will need to do a little bit of measurement but after that, it's just turning it on and then following the guide. So it will tell you if you are level, you know, if you were off level on one of these sides, it'll tell you which side and how much. Um, same here, it'll tell you if you're up or down a little too much. So we went ahead and um, set the level on this. So that is the one thing you will still need, a an actual level. I recommend at least a one foot, if not two foot level. Um, because you always want to double check yourself. So you want to take this inside in the center of the trailer, lay it down, measure left to right, make sure that you're level, and then you set your, um, tell, tell it on your app to set, hey, the trailer is now level, and then from then on forward, you'll be able to, um, to see your level easily before you even park your trailer. And then we have our Coleman chairs. So you, you definitely need camping chairs. Oh well, yeah. And um, these came in a four pack for like 80 bucks on Amazon. Yeah, you got them from Amazon. Something like that. Yeah. Um, they've been pretty great. They're easy to fold up. They've got the cooler. So they'll hold actually a couple drinks in there. Yeah, I could probably fit three cans of something in here, but I usually keep my snacks in there. And yeah. then my soda right there. And you got your holder there and then on the sides, you've got your little pockets. Yep. You can put your phone, your tablets, yep. magazines, whatnot. Yeah, pocket on one side. Yep. And they fold up pretty easy, and they're they're oversized. Yeah. And they're comfortable. Yeah, they're very comfortable. Malcolm has shared the chair with me a few times. Yeah. Yeah. So that's been great. Um, mm -hmm. So we do recommend these. They're they're a very good starter chair. Mm -hmm. um, but I think at some point we're going to go to the, the zero G. Well, zero G is the hose. Are they the, oh, the, no, the anti-gravity? Yeah. I don't know what they uh, yeah. are. Yeah, I don't know. They're the super amazing ones. So if we ever go to those, we'll, we'll the update that. The reclining ones that you can nap in. Yeah. Someday we'll be able to do that. We, we don't get to nap yet. No, no we don't get to nap yet. So. These Max Air covers, they go over the, the little flip-up covers in your um, bathroom and any other rooms that you have those in. Uh, highly recommend those. They keep the rain out, they still allow airflow, and they protect your covers. So we actually had a hailstorm roll through a few months ago, and during our trailer tour video we discovered there was hail damage. We actually had to replace those covers, um, this, the base ones, and at that time decided to go ahead and add the Max Air covers to it. So they've been great. Um, they've got little screens on the inside. Um, of the vent there, so they keep the bugs out, but you still get air coming in, um, sunlight, and keeps the rain out. So those were a good upgrade. You'll see them on a lot of different campers. They're, they seem pretty popular. So one of the other things, um, everybody always has a cart that they use for getting firewood around or other things around the campground. Um, we used our old radio flyer for a while, but it's very big and bulky. And um, somebody turned us on to these little Gorilla carts they sell at Lowe's. Um, I think it was $30. We 
but you can see it folds up real nice. Um, real easy to unfold here. It just folds up like this. There's a So it just sticks in. And it snaps on. You got two front pockets here. A little zippered pocket here. Yeah, I actually had my phone in here the other day. Yeah. And it extends just a little bit so you can wheel it around. Yes. Um, I think it's a 40 pound capacity. Um, and you can see it's very lightweight. Um, you can see it's got uh, filtered through, so it's any water will go straight through there. So you can put whatever. We mainly use it for firewood, but the other day Katie and Sid took it up to um, the mine to surface search. They put a bucket or two in here and a few tools and drug it up to the minefield. So yep, so it's been pretty great. Super easy. Right, minefield conveys a different thing. Than right, right. No, it's the diamond field. The diamond field. Right. Minefield is a whole different thing. Yeah. So anyway, gorilla cart. Yes. Good. So that wraps up kind of the outside products that we use and just kind of how, how useful they've been to us. And um, like you saw, there's a couple of them that we've replaced uh, once or sometimes twice. So hopefully that will help save you guys some money. Um, do your research. You know, we're not the only game in town. There are plenty of people out there using these products. There are plenty of written reviews, blogs, YouTube videos. Um, go check them out. Uh, but these are the ones that, that we found and that we really liked after doing lots of that same kind of research that I'm encouraging you to do. And I think we've got a pretty good success rate. About 80, 85% of the stuff that we bought, we were very happy with and would buy again. Um, a handful of things were flops and other things were just maybe because we didn't know how we were going to use them. So if you're just starting out, do what we did. Watch a lot of channels. We're not the only game in town. Watch other channels too. See how other people use their stuff. Um, look at, at other products. But um, anyway, these are the ones we use. We like them a lot. Uh, we really appreciate you guys watching. If the video is helpful, give us a thumbs up. We'd appreciate that. Also subscribe to our channel. We have tons of things coming up. We've got our travel vlogs, how to's, tips and tricks. Um, at some point, we're going to install a keyless lock in the RV. Maybe you've already seen that video. Maybe it's coming up. I'm not sure yet, <laughs> but we've got lots of stuff. Um, so anyway, thanks for tuning in and we'll see you guys next time.